What's good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to you with that video about Andrew Wiggins signing a huge five-year, $146 million deal. Um, will he live up to the contract? That's the question that we're going to talk about. I'm a guy that Andrew Wiggins has proven a lot in the league. He's not a top 40 player, probably. He's not an elite player at this point. We never know how good he's going to be until the future. Like We can't just say he's not elite. He's not that good. It's just he's still young. His rookie year was a success. He came in the league. He upped his numbers. He was averaging 13 points a game his first couple months. Then he started averaging 16 points a game by the end of the year. So he was able to continue to get better. He was already posting solid numbers. He was able to get better over the long season. He didn't hit a rookie wall. Instead, he increased his numbers and his efficiency as the season went on. Not only did he do that, he went into the rookie sophomore game, lit that on fire, won the MVP of the rookie sophomore game. Then he was able to run away with rookie of the year. His only competition was really Jabari, but Big Bari couldn't stay healthy and Andrew Wiggins said, hey, I don't have no competition. Might as well continue to get better, continue to improve, continue to watch the footage, continue to get comfortable. And he was able to run away with the rookie of the year very quickly. But going into next year, he had a lot of high expectations. Um, they thought that the Wolves should make the playoffs. They thought that, that there was going to be a team that was going to be kind of like a, a threat. Obviously, I didn't believe it. Everybody was on a Timberwolves hype. I said they're not going to make the playoffs last year, and they actually didn't. And I wasn't really surprised because they're a young team. They're terrible on defense. They didn't know how to close out games. They couldn't stay consistently defending teams throughout the whole 48 minutes. And sometimes they went in huge scoring droughts when they just couldn't make shots consistently, especially in the second half. They get off to hot starts and couldn't close out and finish games because of their inconsistent offense and their inconsistent defense. Yes, they had Zach Levine, Andrew Wiggins, and Carl Anthony Towns, but Zach Levine got injured later that season. They went on a little win streak. Then they came back to earth, and then they started losing again. So it is a young team. You have to let them develop. You have to let them watch footage. You got to let them learn it from their mistakes. You got to let them learn how to close out games. Let them get some pain so they don't want to have that feeling again. And you can't just rush success. It has to come naturally. It has to come organically. And the team has to want it. The players has to want it. And they got to do it collectively. And that's something that they couldn't do last year. Now, going into this year, they got even more hype. One thing, Andrew Wiggins just got his one year, I mean, his fire, $140 million deal. And then you add Jimmy Butler, you add a, a point guard like Jeff T, who can knock down the spot of three, play pick and roll with Butler or Car Anthony Towns or Gorgie or even Taz Gibson. And he's a guy that can knock down the three. If they go under, he can get to the paint, knock down floaters or make the right pass because he's a patient player and he plays at a good pace. The two Wiggins, two Butler, two Towns, two Taj, two Gorgie. And he can make the right plays and the right reads. And he's not a ball hog and point guard. He's a point guard that likes to come in and run the offense. The thing I say that is because Wiggins is going to have a lot of opportunity to prove how good he has gotten. Because he's playing around. He's playing with Jimmy Butler and Teague and a, a better team. So Tibbs going to expect more from him and Car Anthony Towns. Butler already knows how to close out games. He made the playoffs as the best player last year on the team, and he was able to make the playoffs and even win two games in the playoffs. So we already know what Jimmy Butler going to bring. He's going to bring leadership. He's going to bring class, and he's going to bring a closer and a guy that's not scared to guard the best player on the team and get him hell. And that's something that Andrew Wiggins was doing last year, but he doesn't have to do it this year. Plus, he doesn't really have to have the ball in the fourth quarter because you still do have Towns and you have a closer in Jimmy Butler who actually won playoff series and made it to the playoffs and led a team to the playoffs as the best player. And it was able to win over 40 games. So Jimmy Butler takes a lot of pressure off Andrew Wiggins because he's not the only perimeter defender and the only perimeter scorer. 
he is not on the best defender and the best scorer on the team from the perimeter. And with that being said, now we're going to expect Andrew Wiggins to be either the third wheel under Jimmy Butler or Towns. And can he develop? That's the thing. I actually think he could because he has gotten better literally every season. He went from averaging 16. And like I said, he improved throughout his rookie year to finish strong. And he was able to win rookie of the year in the sophomore MVP. But not only that, he was able to come back and shoot even better and average 20. And last year, even though when Zach Levine went out, he got a little help by he had more chances to score the ball and more opportunities to score because he didn't have to share the ball with Zach Levine. And that upped his stats even more because he was able to take more shots. And same with Carl Anthony Towns, Zach Levine went, got injured. They both of their stats inflated. So he was able to keep at the same field goal percentage and still was able to average more points in his basically first three years. But the thing about it is, can he continue to improve? Can he continue to dominate? And can he be a closer? Those things that he doesn't have to do now. But the question now is, can he be a $140 million player? Because at the end of the day, they're going to have to play Carl Anthony Towns. They might have to pay Butler if they want to keep him. And now you just committed a lot of money to a player that hasn't really proven that he's a superstar, hasn't really proven that he's the guy, hasn't really proven that he can be the best player on the team. He shows signs of it, but he hasn't proved it. And everybody was already saying that Towns was better than Wiggins, and he'd been in the league a year later than him. And everybody already saying that he got passed up. So is Andrew Wiggins really worth the max? Um, at the end of the day, I think he might be, but I don't think he will be because of the talent that's around him. And on top of that, he still has holes in this game. He has to be a better defender. He has to be a better rebounder, a better playmaker, a better decision maker, and a guy that he he just has. We just have to wait because he's just not he's just not old enough, and he hasn't played enough, and he hasn't really played in that many big games because he's been steadily losing and not even in the playoffs. So that's stuff that he will have to learn, see, go through. And once he does that, he'll be able to come back and show us, is he going to be that guy? And like I said, Jimmy Butler and Gordon Anthony Towns going to take pressure off of him for he, so he will be able to thrive even better if he wants to play like that and thrive off better teammates and thrive off being the third wheel. And on top of that, the, you, you got to think about it. At the end of the day, Andrew Wiggins has improved. But at the end of the day, I think it's it's pretty funny that they locked him up for the max. They gave him so much money. And they was like, hey, we want you to continue to improve. We're going to give you the money. And now they're going to be stuck into a Jimmy Butler, Carl Anthony Towns, Wiggins, and T team for like the next two to three years. And that's the question now. Can they win with this roster? Can they win with a big three being Towns, Wiggins, and, and Jimmy? If they're going to win, they're going to need more out of Wiggins defensively, offensively, and he's going to have to knock down corner threes, spot up threes, even though he shot 30%, I mean 35% from three last year. He's going to have to be a better team player. He's going to have to be a ball mover, not a ball stopper, and he's going to have to be able to play within the offense with great players and still be able to contribute and still be able to contribute to winning, making the right plays, getting the stops, and finding ways to impact the game in different ways and not just being the scorer. And if he's gonna if he's able to do that, then he might be worth the hundred million dollars. Even if he doesn't put up superstar franchise numbers, he really doesn't have to because he has help. And they might be a great team in the future because we don't know what Wiggins ceiling is. He's steadily getting better. He's steadily improving and we don't know how high his ceiling can be. And like I said, with the help he has now, he doesn't even have to do it that much now because he has players to step up. And like I said, this is a five-year deal. By the end of the deal, I think he'd be 28. So he'll still be young and he'll still help hopefully be healthy. And hopefully he's improved even better and become more of a complete player in the future. But this is, to me, was a deal that they had to do. They couldn't let Wiggins go. They couldn't let another team offer him a max 
or uh, give them an offer as a restricted free agent if they couldn't make a deal. They say, hey, we got a great player. We believe in him. He's proven that he can get better. We got to pay him his money. He's young. He's athletic. He has a huge potential. Let's just give him his money. See if he can deal with it, the pressure. See if he can become a better player. See if he can play well with the team that we have now. And let's make a run right now. Even though they might not win a, a playoff series, even though they might make the playoffs or might not, they saying we can't find nobody at his age that can be better than what he already has produced. So instead of just letting him walk or letting somebody else give him an offer, they paid him. And now we're going to have to see if he can live up to the results in that contract. And can he actually fulfill his potential as a number one pick to be that guy, to be the franchise player? But he has a lot of competition on his team. And I think that it's better for him just to feed off them and be basically a complete team player and do whatever the team needs him to do for winning. And if he can do that, then he will live up to the contract because he's a guy that hard to replace to find a wing player of his size, of his athletic ability, and have that potential. It's hard to find a replacement, especially in a draft and in the NBA. It's already hard to get a Paul George and a Jimmy Butler because they've been in the league for several years and only got traded once. So once you have two of those wing players, because the league is built off the wing players, once you have two, you're in a very special place. And they have two, and now they have an opportunity to prove that they can be a great team in the future. So after they locked up Wiggins, now they just got locked up Towns. And Jimmy and Jeff Teague is already under contract. And since they already on the roster, they already get the bonus. The longer that you stay with a team, the more money, the more money you can get. So Jimmy Butler can be like, hey, I'm playing with Tim's, Tibbs, we're winning. And now I can get a five-year extension because I've already been playing with the Wolves over these last couple of years. Because Jimmy Butler got two years on his contract. So let me know what you guys think. Is Wiggins worth the money? Is he not? Is he a bust? Is he overrated? Will he live up to the contract? Will he not? Let me know in the comment section below. Quinn Wade, basketball analysis. I'm gone. Check out my website, analysisplayground.com. Link will be in the description in the comment section below. Also, check out my Facebook page, analysisplayground.com. Link will be in the description in the comment section below. Click the link you see to my website. Click the link you see to my Facebook page. And all I'm asking you guys to do is show support. And will Wiggins live up to the contract? Will he live up to the hype of being a number one pick, being the best player in the draft, and potential franchise player? We won't know, but we can talk about it five years from now if I'm living. Ha, ha, ha.